Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and thanks for tuning in. Breaking news, did Donald Trump received money from Russian oligarchs? Did Mark Meadows committed voting fraud? Is William Barr in legal trouble? Why did Judge Jackson called William Barr's memo disingenuous? Is the DOJ investigating Trump now? How Russian oligarch money helped Republican GOP and Donald Trump? Did Robert Mueller's letter to Barr dismissed his memo summary of the Mueller's report? What did Roger Stone leaked tape said about Donald Trump? Why is Kanye accusing Kim? In today's international news, how is the war Russian launched on Ukraine going? Now for the details, please stay tuned. Donald Trump and his cronies have received money from Russian oligarch Andrei Muraviev. About three months before the 2018 midterm elections, Muraviev would give donations in the name of another person. In 2020, the federal grand jury delivered the indictment against him. Although there is no explanation why it was sealed until this week. The prosecutors have said that more than $150,000 of the money Muraviev had sent, which was siphoned through a bank account controlled by Igor. It is a crime to see people like Donald Trump's PAC, Rudolph Giuliani, Texas Republican Representative Peter Sessions and others connected to this crime. Trump and the Republicans are making secret deals with Russian oligarchs trying to undo the influence of American electoral system that what emptiers. Now, the question is why is Trump and the GOP doing business with Russian oligarchs in the first place? Donald Trump and others billionaires are helping Russians to offshore their money. They do that by selling properties that they know have been bought not as legitimate investment, but it is a clear way to violate international laws and sanctions. The simple answer for helping these Russian oligarchs is because Trump and his cronies are corrupt, they are crooked, they want the money and don't care where it came from, who it hurts. All they know is that they are getting illegal money and collaborating in these multi-million dollars illegal schemes, that is one of the reason Trump was so soft on Russia because, he helped oligarchs hide their money in plain sight by buying all these luxury New York City condos, to run away from potential sanctions. A Newsweek reporter laid out in details how many of those transactions are designed to shield these oligarchs' assets by hiding the true ownership of their properties. Over the last decade, the city's developers have put a series of super-tall, jogged, toothpick towers at the bottom of Central Park, designed and marketed to the world's 0.01%, just a tiny group in which Russian oligarchs are disproportionately represented. The area is now called Manhattan Real Estate Circles as Billionaires Row. These properties Sheme really exploded in 2011, but in 2008, a Russian oligarch named Rybolivlev who owns a professional soccer club as Monaco FC, purchased Donald Trump's Palm Beach mansion for $95 million, and he put the condo in the name of his college-age daughter. Elena, who was Trump's estranged wife at that time, sued him and accused him of shielding his assets from her by spending freely using trusts linked to their children. Rybolivlev transactions changed the city's real estate landscape forever. We need to keep all of this in mind that billionaires like Donald Trump and others are called American oligarchs because, they have created a situation, where they can make secret deals with these billionaire Russian oligarchs that benefit both of them and he doesn't if it benefits either countries or regular American citizens. Even, when Trump was in office, he didn't care about ordinary Americans he only care about the money and praising Vladimir Putin. Trump is suffering from Putin derangement syndrome. Remember when Donald Trump was claiming voting fraud? Actually, it was Trump and members of his administration who were engaging in voting fraud. This guy is former Donald Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, committed voting fraud in North Carolina. Here is why. Mark Meadows and his family rented a house in North Carolina that he used as his address to vote in that state. But the fact is he had never lived there nor spent a single night there according to the people who rented him the house. But according to North Carolina's law, you have to be registered at place of a vote, which means where you lived in order for you to vote in that district. There you have a folks. Mark Meadows committed voting fraud in that state. It was on Friday, March 22, 2019, when special counsel Robert S. Mueller delivered his report of the investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election to the then Attorney General, William Barr. 
when Barr got the report, he didn't share it with the public or Congress after three weeks of holding the report, William Barr claimed after consulting with the Office of Legal Counsel, he used Barrow opinion and said this in his letter to Congress, quote, the evidence developed during the Council's investigation is not sufficient to establish that Donald Trump committed an obstruction of justice, unquote. But Mueller quickly rejected Barr's conclusion of his report findings. On March 27, 2019, Robert Mueller wrote a letter to William Barr and this is what he wrote, quote, The summary letter the department sent to Congress and released to the public lately that afternoon of March 24, 2019, did not fully capture the context, nature, and substance of this office's work and conclusion. Unquote. Mueller continued, there is now public confusion about critical aspects of the results of our investigation. This threatens to undermine a central purpose for which the department appointed the special counsel, to assure full public confidence. Finally, Mueller said, the redaction process need not delay release of the enclosed materials release at this time would alleviate the misunderstandings that have arisen and would answer congressional and public questions about the nature of his investigation, he concluded. He spoke with William Barr on the phone for 15 minutes regarding this issue. William Barr lied to the American people and Congress in his memo claiming that he consulted will DOJ attorney and his legal counsel and concluded that Donald Trump did not commit any crime. Evan thought it was laid out 10 times in Mueller's report that Trump committed an obstructed of justice. This is the Sion time he has lied to Congress and the American people. His first lie was when Senator Pamela Harris now Vice President asked Barr if anyone have asked him to investigate election fraud he said um no which was a lie because Trump told him to investigate his false claim of election fraud. But according to this judge, Amy Berman Jackson, a federal judge from the District of Columbus, William Barr lied to her and he was refusing to allow her to see Mueller's full report. However, when she got her hand on it, she ruled that, quote, the advice that Barr got from the Department of Justice that said that a sitting president cannot be charged of any crime must be released to the general public something that William Barr didn't want to release because he claimed it was from legal advice. But the judge said, no, the document wasn't anything but a lie and Barr was disingenuous. William Barr may be in legal trouble and it's time for him to get a lawyer because he created a pseudo-legal paper trail to cover their tracks on that after the fact and lied to Judge Jackson. This guy Roger Stone who was part of the plot to overturn the 2020 election said on a recently leaked tape, quote, it was the greatest mistake America made to elect Donald Trump as president, unquote. But this guy is one of Trump's cronies and he was even pardoned by Trump for his crimes he committed. In another news, Kanye West who have changed his name to Ye recently went on social media to complain about his ex-wife, Kim. He said Kim is not allowing him to take his daughter North to Sunday service. Ye has been acting strange since Kim divorced him. I think he needs help to cope with what he might be going through. We now know that the Department of Justice confirms that it's investigating Trump for taking classified documents to his Mar-a-Lago home. The war between Russia and Ukraine is not going well with Vladimir Putin. In a recent address Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday urged the people of his nation to be patient as they continue to defend their country against Russia's military invasion, which has now entered its 16th day. I know that many people have started to feel tired. I understand. Impatient. I understand, Zelensky said in a video posted online. This is life. When we mobilize, when we see our victories and the loss of the enemy on the battlefield, we expect the struggle to end sooner. We expect the invaders to fall faster. But this is life, this is war. This is a struggle. Time is still needed. Patience is still needed. Zelensky's comments came as Russian forces continued their siege on Mariupol, where civilians have now been without water, electricity and heat for more than a week. This is a humanitarian catastrophe, Zelensky said. Humanitarian catastrophe, two words that have become fully synonymous with the other two words, the Russian Federation. On Wednesday, Ukrainian officials said a Russian airstrike had destroyed a children's hospital and maternity ward in the city. The attack was widely condemned by world leaders, including Vice President Kamala Harris, who said the U.S. would work with its allies to investigate Russia for possible war crimes. 
President Biden spoke with Zelensky on Friday morning before announcing new U.S. sanctions against Russia, including a ban imports of Russian alcohol, seafood and diamonds. According to Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov said on Friday that Russian forces invading Ukraine have killed more Ukrainian civilians than soldiers, at least 549 Ukrainian civilians, including 41 children, have been killed, according to the United Nations. But the agency believes the actual death toll is likely much higher. According to the UN, more than 2.5 million refugees have fled Ukraine since February 24, when Russia's invasion began. Zelensky implored those who have stayed to hold on. Be sure to fight. Be sure to give your all strength, he said. It will not be easy with such a neighbor. But with us, it will not be easy too. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.